Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We had looked at tissue dynamics and uh, while we talked about tissue dynamics, we talked about uh, what the cells would usually be doing when they are residing in the cell, uh, residing in the tissue and uh, the first thing we talked about would be the cell division, so which is cells dividing and uh, multiplying and you actually have uh, cell differentiation as the next step usually, like if you have a stem cell which is where the most of the uh, tissues are going to originate from and the cells would all come from uh, stem cells uh, rather than uh, mature cells multiplying to cause uh, to create large number of cells usually uh, for creating new tissues stem cells are uh, recruited and you actually have stem cells multiplying to form uh, the desired tissue. For that to happen differentiation is a crucial factor. So we will talk about uh, cell differentiation. So differentiation is basically the process of cells specializing in a function. So stem cells as you all know do not have any specialized function, they can uh, mature to form any type of uh, cell. So the differentiation is the process which results in the formation of a specific cell type with a desired functionality. So there can be uh, cell so differentiation because of the process called asymmetric division. Asymmetric cell division is basically where you have uh, two non-identical uh, cells which are formed, the daughter cells uh, are not the same. So in regular mitosis you would have two cells which are exactly the same here in asymmetric cell division one is basically for uh, the self renewal property of the stem cell. So it basically divides and retains its uh, stemness, other goes into the progenitor cell. And these progenitor cells can then become uh, more and more uh, differentiated to form the final differentiated cell lines. But usually these progenitor cells multiply uh, through just regular cell division uh, to form more number of progenitor cells which then get differentiated. So this is because as I already mentioned uh, progenitor cells divide at a much faster rate compared to uh, fully differentiated cells. So what you are seeing in the figure is the first step is the asymmetric cell division where the cells are dividing, one is forming a stem cell which is self renewing, the other one is a committed progenitor cell. The committed progenitor cell basically then multiplies and amplifies, this is the progenitor division so that you have more number of cells that can be differentiated and the final step is the terminal differentiation to form the uh, fully differentiated cells. So uh, during cell differentiation you would experience something called population asymmetry. Basically uh, divisions of stem cells uh, population results in a large number of cells and these can actually uh, form different types of cells and this provides additional versatility. Cells can proceed down several uh, possible fates depending on the environment they are in, conditions that are provided to them and so on. So if half the cells become stem cells, the total population of the stem cells remains a constant. So that way you have the self renewing property of the stem cells taken care of. So uh, what actually happens in a differentiation process is as a stem cell matures it undergoes changes in its gene expression that limit the cell types uh, that it can become. So uh, there are changes inside the cell which make sure that it is beginning to get some of the functionalities of the differentiated cells and it then because this happens it starts moving closer towards the final cell type. So these changes are actually monitored by the can be monitored by the presence of uh, proteins on the surface. So the surface markers and receptors which are expressed can be used as identifying whether the cell is remaining as a stem cell or if it is moving closer towards a differentiated cell. So with each uh, successive change the cell moves closer to the final differentiated uh, cell and it is uh, potential for becoming a different cell is actually becoming lesser. So it becomes more and more committed towards one particular cell type as more and more changes happen to the cell, so which is logical right. So it is not a one step process, it is not like the stem cells uh, form a committed progenitor which multiplies and then 
miraculously it just changes to one particular cell type, it does not happen that way. It is a sequential process which takes a significant amount of time and as the, as the time goes on it gets more and more committed towards particular cell type. So, this is a, an example of a, how it could actually happen. So, what you see here is a, a totipotent cell which is non self renewing like a zygote. So, zygote does not self renew right and then you have the pluripotent stem cells which are self renewing and uh, embryonic stem cells would be an example of the pluripotent stem cells. So, then this forms a broad potential uh, self renewing cell. So, these are, these are still uh, self renewing cells, these are multipotent stem cells which come from here and uh, then it becomes a limited potential limited self renewal uh, cell which uh, until this process what you would see is there is a possibility of the cells going back right. So, it can actually go back a stage uh, because it is not fully committed yet. So, it, is, it can still go back and uh, here it forms some kind of a progenitor. So, here the example given is for uh, neural cells. So, it forms a neural progenitor and uh, here it is more committed towards one particular lineage. So, from here it then divides where it uh, is even more uh, specific where it can become a neuronal progenitor or a glial uh, progenitor. And uh, here by this point it becomes almost irreversible. So, after this it is now committed to a particular lineage and it cannot actually go back. Uh, so, and then finally it forms a neuron or a glia uh, based on how the conditions are. The cells can probably die at any of these stages, but they cannot go back after it commits itself to a particular lineage. Okay, so, this would be uh, how a general process would look like. So, uh, I will talk about a couple of things which are very popular when we talk, when we discuss uh, stem cells and cell differentiation. One process which is very well studied and has been very well established is the hematopoietic stem cell, uh, the process of hematopoiesis. The process of hematopoiesis is basically the process where hematopoietic stem cells commit and differentiate uh, to form different blood cells right. So, that is basically the formation of all the types of blood cells is from a type of cell called hematopoietic stem cell. So, these uh, actually reside inside the bone marrow and uh, they have the ability to give rise to various types of uh, mature blood cells and tissues. So, these are self renewing cells where the daughter cells can either be a hematopoietic stem cell or uh, a myeloid or lymphoid uh, progenitor cell. So, once it commits towards a myeloid or lymphoid progenitor it will then go through the differentiation path, uh, pathway and to form different types of cells ok. So, but uh, it goes through asymmetric cell division first, so that the self renewing property of the hematopoietic stem cells is taken care of. The progenitor cells uh, can follow any differentiation pathway. So, these uh, myeloid or lymphoid progenitor cells are not going to form one type of cell right. So, myeloid will have its own variety of cells and lymphoid can have its own variety of cells that can be formed. So, they can follow any of these pathways leading to production of one or more uh, cells, cell types, but uh, these cell types cannot renew themselves. So, these progenitor cells cannot renew themselves they are already committed. So, this is a simplistic representation of what hematopoiesis is. So, what you see here is the multipotential hematopoietic stem cell which has the self renewing property uh, then differentiating multiplying to basically uh, form uh, a common myeloid progenitor or a common lymphoid progenitor. So, this is formed through asymmetric division. So, you either have uh, another HSC formed or a common myeloid progenitor or a common lymphoid progenitor which is formed. So, from here from the myeloid progenitor you can get uh, megakaryocytes which form thrombocytes, erythrocytes, mast cells and myoblasts. Myoblasts can then go to form basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes and macrophages. Uh, common lymphoid progenitor cells can actually form the natural killer cells or uh, it could form the small lymphocyte which would then further be differentiated to form T cells and B cells. Right. So, this is a very uh, simplistic representation of what a hematopoiesis process is. So, uh, in general blood cells are actually divided into three lineages. You have the red blood cells or the erythrocytes 
these are the oxygen carrying cells they have the hemoglobin so they uh, bind to oxygen and they can carry oxygen to the uh, site. So, these are functional cells that are released into the blood. So, once the differentiation happens it will get released into the blood uh, they are formed by the process called erythropoiesis. So, within hematopoiesis there uh, the, uh, the pathway which is taken for uh, differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells to form erythrocytes is called erythropoiesis. Uh, you also have lymphocytes which have a critical role in immune uh, response and uh, especially in adaptive immune systems. So, these uh, are composed of the T cells, uh, B cells and the NK cells or the natural killer cells. So, these are formed by the process of lymphopoiesis and uh, cells from a myeloid lineage include granulocytes, megakaryocytes and uh, macrophages. So, these are derived from a common myeloid progenitor through myelopoiesis this is also these cells are also involved in innate Im immunity and blood clotting and many other mechanisms uh, they have a versatile functionality in your body. So, these are the three major lineages for blood cells. So, uh, the process of forming granulocytes is called as granulopoiesis or granulocytopoiesis and uh, this is done uh, this is done inside the bone marrow except for uh, mast cells where the ma mast cells are actually pr uh, produced the differentiation happens outside the bone marrow which is called this uh, extra medullar maturation. So, medulla is the technical term for the bone marrow. So, it is extra medullar uh, maturation. So, megakaryocytopoiesis is the hematopoiesis of megakaryocytes. So, this is the general uh, hematopoiesis process. So, if you were to look at it in a more detailed step by step fashion this is what it would look like. So, the multipoietic multipotential hematopoietic stem cells have the self renewing property and they form common myeloid progenitors or common lymphoid progenitors as I had already mentioned. And uh, so, the common myeloid progenitor can basically come out of the bone marrow and then mature into a mast cell that is the extra medullar uh, maturation to form mast cells. So, inside the bone marrow uh, this myeloid progenitor can then become a megakaryoblast which then becomes a pro megakaryocyte and a megakaryocyte. So, this megakaryocyte then comes to the blood where it forms thrombocytes or platelets. So, this process is the thrombopoiesis where you end up forming the platelets. So, the formation of megakaryocyte is um, megakaryocytopoiesis. Okay. So, the other uh, pathway for erythropoiesis would be it goes into the pro uh, to form pro erythroblast, basophilic erythroblast, er erythroblast and then polychromatic erythroblast, orthochromatic erythroblast or a normoblast and from where it forms a reticulocyte or a pro, uh, polychromatic erythrocyte. So, this enters into the bloodstream where in the form of erythrocytes where it gets matured. So, this pathway is the uh, erythropoiesis. So, as you see these are all coming into the blood whereas, mast cells enter into the tissue. So, the from the common myeloid uh, progenitor you could also have the myeloblast which can then differentiate into different uh, granulocytes like basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils and it can also form monocytes which can then differentiate to form dendritic cells and uh, macrophages. So, as you see there are steps for each of them. So, it all goes through the uh, pro myelocyte then to myelocyte then meta myelocyte then a band cell finally forming either a basophil or a neutrophil or an eosinophil and so on. Okay. And uh, so, what you need to notice here is where these differentiations happen. Right. So, until the last step everything happens inside the bone marrow and the final step is where it happens in the blood, the final maturation happens in the blood or it gets released into the blood. Okay. So, the uh, common lymphoid progenitor however, uh, forms these lymphocytes which is which goes through either a lymph, uh, lymphoblast pro lymphocyte and then forms small lymphocytes which would then develop into B cells and T cells or it could uh, go into forming uh, natural killer cells which are the larger uh, granular, lymph granular lymphocytes. And uh, you could also have this common uh, lymphoid progenitor forming dendritic cells the lymphoid dendritic cells directly. Okay. So, as you see there is a significant number of process, uh, steps which are involved in uh, each of these process. It is not like so until unlike the previous thing which we saw 
So, in the previous one what we saw is uh, it just goes from here to here right. So, myeloid to erythro erythrocyte is what a simple representation is, but in in reality it actually has so many different steps uh, the cells exist in 4 or 5 different uh, levels of differentiation before it finally forms the fully differentiated cell. Okay, so, he, uh, hematopoiesis can actually be modeled uh, and there are two theories for modeling it one is the deterministic model and the other is a stochastic model. So, determin deterministic model is the classical way of describing hematopoiesis what we kind of saw is a deterministic model where we say it goes into this, this environment will provide this particular condition where it goes into everything and it goes into a particular pathway and there is no real randomness to this process it just depends on the factors the colony stimulating factors and other uh, factors present in the micro environment. So, this determines the path for the cell differentiation right. So, this is what we kind of uh, have always believed in and this is a classical pathway. However, uh, recent experiments are supporting the theory of stochastic differentiation. So, basically undifferentiated blood cells can differentiate into specific cell types by randomness. So, there is no real uh, control over how this happens and there are factors which do control, but there have been studies which show that the cells can go back and uh, at each step and there is quite a few uh, uh, there is a significant level of randomness which cannot be completely ignored. You cannot just say that it is deterministic saying this environment will definitely lead to this so, it is not that. So, and uh, so this actually is a representation of the growth factors and uh, other uh, molecules which can guide into uh, specific differentiations. So, what you would see here is many of these uh, factors are repetitive which is probably one of the reasons for the stochastic uh, like, uh, model of differentiation right. It is not that uh, like for example, this I L 3 can be present in um, it is present in the formation of myeloid progenitor which can then form me uh, megakaryocytes or erythrocytes. So, it is present in both. So, it could play a role in uh, both these conditions right. So, based on this it is actually very uh, difficult to say that one particular uh, environment is going to force cells into dividing into forming particular things, but people can people are trying to use this understanding to design uh, the cocktail in which the cells can be grown. So, that there can be a differentiation that is directed towards a specific cell lineage. So, uh, the next uh, major type of stem cells which are uh, extensively studied and uh, extensively used in uh, tissue engineering applications is the mesenchymal stem cells. So, these are basically multipotent stromal cells that can differentiate into a variety of cell types. So, basically they have been shown to form osteoblasts, chondrocytes, myocytes and adipocytes. So, osteoblasts are bone cells, uh, and chondrocytes are cartilage cells, myocytes are muscle cells and adipocytes are fat cells. So, mesenchymal stem cells have uh, a very good capacity of self renewing while maintaining their multipotency. Uh, the capacity of the cells to proliferate and differentiate is known to decrease with the age of the donor as well as the time in culture. So, as even if it maintains its stemness as you have multiple passages then you would see that the rate of proliferation would be lesser and its ability to differentiate into different cell types comes down. So, the original source uh, for mesenchymal stem cells is uh, bone marrow. So, hematopoietic stem cells are also from bone marrow right. Uh, however, these are different from the mesenchymal stem cells. The HSCs and MSCs are different, although they both reside in the bone marrow. Bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells do not contribute in the formation of blood cells, whereas hematopoietic stem cells are fully committed towards the formation of blood cells in your body. So, because they are not involved in the formation of blood cells, they do not express the HSC marker CD34. So, that is actually uh, used to identify whether the cells you have isolated is a mesenchymal stem cell or a hematopoietic stem cell. So, these are also referred to as uh, bone marrow stromal stem cells and uh, so these terms are used interchangeably in many cases. Another source for getting uh, mesenchymal stem cells is the umbilical cord tissue. 
So, this is the youngest and the most primitive mesenchymal stem cells that is why there is a, a lot of uh, interest in storing the cord blood and the cord uh, placenta to hope that you would be able to use it for some regenerative medicine which might be uh, developed at, in the future. So, this basically has two different uh, tissues one is the Wharton's jelly and the other is the cord blood. So, the Wharton's jelly is a, a gelatinous material which is present in your uh, placenta which is uh, which is very rich in mesenchymal stem cells and the cord blood is rich in uh, hematopoietic stem cells. So, uh, there are other sources as well. Uh, adipose tissue is a rich source of adipose derived mesenchymal stem cells. Molar cells which are basically the teeth uh, tissue. So, the if you have a developing tooth bud um, then those are rich in mesenchymal stem cells. So, these mesenchymal stem cells are the dental stem cells actually form uh, enamel, dentin, blood vessels, dental pulp and various nerve tissues. So, people have also shown that these can form hepatocytes and many other types of cells. Amniotic fluid is also a source from where you can get mesenchymal stem cells. So, it is the fluid in which the fetus is present and uh, this can actually be harvested uh, using a process called amniocentesis. Amniocentesis is nothing but taking a large gauge needle and injecting it uh, into the uterus to draw the uh, amniotic fluid. So, this is usually done for diagnostic purposes. So, this amniotic fluid basically has a uh, lot of cells and 1 in 100 cells which are ex uh, collected using amniocentesis is a mesenchymal stem cell which could also be used for uh, tissue engineering applications. So, this is a representation of how mesenchymal stem cells can actually differentiate to form uh, various lineage cells. So, I am not going to go into great details. So, what I have here is for adipocytes, myocytes, chondrocytes and osteoblasts. So, within that we have basically classifications we have the white adipocytes, brown adipocytes, uh, skeletal muscle and uh, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle and chondrocytes and uh, mature osteoblasts. Okay. So, this uh, kind of gives what is the um, pathways different pathways these uh, mesenchymal stem cells can take and what would be the growth factors and other molecules which can be uh, helpful in convert in directing the mesenchymal stem cells into these lineages. So, whatever we looked at right. So, uh, the basic uh, concept of differentiation is what usually happens in your body. So, you want to try to use this to direct differentiation ultimately that is the aim right. We want to uh, because we are looking at a tissue engineering application where we are going to use these stem cells and we would want to uh, differentiate these stem cells to produce specific cells with desirable functionality. So, that we will be able to perform the, the tissue we develop will be able to perform its functions. So, this is basically done through uh, activating endogenous transcription factors or it can also be done by transfection of uh, uh, it can also be done by transfection of uh, stem cells with ubiquitously expressing transcription factors. You can also have the stem cells being exposed to selected growth factors or uh, you can culture the stem cells uh, along with other cell types which can induce uh, lineage uh, of the specific cell type. So, you can also do combinations where you treat it with uh, growth factors or antagonists and try to use this kind of a process for differentiating cells directing the differentiation of stem cells. So, uh, basically this is what happens let us uh, look at an example where uh, where you are basically talking about an external signal which is a growth factor which you add. So, let us say a growth factor is present in the media in which the cells are being cultured what happens is this diffusible protein growth factors. Uh, will bind to the receptor of the protein will have to diffuse and reach the receptor uh, of the surface of the protein where it will bind to the receptor and uh, then it initiates an intracellular signal which is transmitted uh, through protein tyrosine kinase or other intracellular uh, signal transducers like G protein. And once that happens there is an action within the nucleus uh, which basically helps in uh, which basically causes the expression of certain transcription factors which results in uh, the cells getting differentiated. Okay, so, this is what you see in an external <coughs> signal uh, stimuli. 
So, uh, other than this you can also direct differentiation using biophysical properties which would be the mechanical or the physical uh, properties of the uh, material on which the cells are being cultured. So, this is a, uh, a brief re uh, a representation of what are all the factors that can actually affect you could have material composition could that could play a role depending on the material composition how the cells interact with the material will change if you uh, the integrins and cell binding cell adhesion could all change based on the composition of the material that you are using. Uh, substrate stiffness has also been shown to affect how the cells differentiate themselves and the last one is the nano topography where the topography the surface topography of the material can actually direct cells because <coughs> that helps in uh, while the cells are cultured they might have to be um, aligned in the presence of this nano topography and if that happens the sense the cells will differentiate to specific cell types and so on. So, here are some examples uh, where composition and uh, stiffness and topography have been used to get different types of cells. So, I am not going to go into each and every one, but uh, I hope you would go through this to try and understand uh, what I each of these materials and each of these uh, properties can actually do. So, this gives an overview of uh, what people have tried and what people have been able to accomplish. So, uh, one last example uh, would be alginate. Alginate is uh, something which has been studied extensively for uh, mesenchymal stem cell differentiation because they are very easy to work with and uh, you can change their properties very easily. So, people have shown that uh, the structure uh, of the alginate whether it is an injectable solution or if you have it as a porous scaffold can uh, alter the way these molecules are delivered thereby uh, that can play a role in how the mesenchymal stem cells are differentiating. Another uh, factor which uh, has been shown to modulate uh, differentiation is the adhesiveness of the su surface the adhesivity of the alginate uh, material. So, in the presence of a peptide you have people have observed it to be differentiated to osteogenic whereas, when there is no peptide it differentiates towards uh, a chondrogenic uh, cell line even when every other property is the same. And composition uh, can actually mediate the material properties and it can be used to convert cells uh, sorry con uh, differentiate uh, cells to form myogenic or chondrogenic depending on whether you have collagen along with this or fibrin along with this. So, people have shown these kinds of differentiations are also possible. Mechanical properties such as stiffness as the stiffness is lesser you would end up forming something like an adipocyte and as the stiffness increases you would end up forming a muscle or a bone tissue. So, it is quite logical right it depends on how the ECM of the natural tissue is and based on that this differentiation happens. So, this gives a brief introduction on the biology of uh, differentiation and how directed differentiation is being explored for uh, stem cells. So, in the next lecture we will talk about uh, a little bit about the mathematical modeling aspects with respect to how these external factors interact with the surfaces and so on. Thank you.